Greetings, gamer guys and gals. I'm Zeke, welcoming you to part two of my Let's Play of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Let's get rolling. Chapter one, the battle begins. Good morning, Ike. Today's your first day as a professional soldier, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm ready to go. What you are is late. The others were suited up and ready at the break of dawn. Sorry, I'll get up earlier from now on. So what's my first job? I'm t talking with Titania right now. Wait outside until we're done. Yes, sir. Very well, Commander Grail. Shall we continue? You were telling me about some bandits that needed taking care of, weren't you? Correct. The request comes from a nearby village. According to our reports, the bandits are not all that strong. I think it best if I ride out and take a look. I plan on taking Oscar and Boyd along with me. Just the brothers? Hmm. Go ahead and add Ike to your team. Shinon and Gatry and I can handle the other two jobs easily enough. Titania, I'm leaving Ike in your care. I'm trusting you to show him the ropes. Understood, Commander. Come on, Ike. Let's get you set up. All right, my first job. Captain Titania, pr preparations are complete, and I'm ready to go. Impeccable timing. It's nice to know we can always count on you to be at the ready, Oscar. Don't forget about me. I'm ready for action. Is that so, Boyd? That's a surprise. Ha! Not today it isn't. As of today, I am going to be the absolute model of perfection. I need to set a good example for Ike. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Your first campaign at last. I know you've wanted this for a while. Are you nervous, Ike? I think I was more nervous last night. I could hardly sleep. This morning, I'm feeling pretty good. It's the calm before the storm. You should try to relax. You're not going to be out there alone. Yeah, you're right. Right. Everyone ready? Let's go. Chaldea. All right, let me explain what's going on. This is a map of Chaldea. They've hired us to drive off some bandits. Where are the blue marks here? The red dots are the bandits. There aren't many of them, but we can't get careless. The one in front of the building up north is their leader. Our mission is to take him out and recapture that building. Ike, listen up. All this stuff is old news to me, but I can give a rookie like you a few tips. First off, don't let yourself get worked up and jump out in front of everyone. You'll just end up getting hurt. Don't try to do too much, Ike. When things get dangerous, you can and should rely on us. As long as you watch how the enemy moves carefully, you'll be fine. Think of this as a training mission. I'll do that. Oscar, Boyd, thanks for your help. Don't mention it. Just sit back and watch how a professional handles things. Enough chit-chat, you three. We've got work to do. Ike, before you engage an enemy, take a good look at his weapon. The weapon you use often determines who has the upper hand in a fight. For example, the axe I'm wielding serves me well against lances, but it fares less well against swords. And my lance is great against swords, but not against axes. And to complete the triangle... Ah, my sword! It's strong against axes, but weak against lances, right? Yes, exactly. If you can remember that, you'll be more effective in combat. That's just the basics, though. This'll come in handy soon enough, so don't forget it. Swords over axes. I won't forget it. Not if I remember that I'll always have the advantage over you, Boyd. Do you think you could maybe find a different way of remembering? <laughs> yeah, thanks. 
And one more thing, don't forget to visit the locals. We're here to help after all. The villagers should welcome our presence. All right. So if you couldn't really tell by the way that Oscar and Boyd and Titania were talking to Ike in the beginning of this chapter here, it is very clear that you are supposed to be slotted in for Ike. That not only is he the main character of the game, he is your character. I like this approach way better than the approach that's taken with later games in the series, including Three Houses, though I love Three Houses, um, better than having an avatar character or a self-insert. This is way better. It makes for better storytelling. It makes for a more grounded story approach. And now it, this character can have emotion. Ike can have emotion and different goals and drives and, and ideals that aren't your own. And that you don't, ha don't have to slot in for yourself. I think that's a little bit ridiculous that that's the way that Fire Emblem today is being approached as. And I hope that it changes back to this formula. But as for the time being, we are playing Path of Radiance. And Path of Radiance keeps very clear ideal of who Ike is and who the rest of the cast is. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, Oscar is a Lance Knight. Um, he is going to be a great asset to this run. And he is very useful. As you will soon see, horseback units in this game have some pretty cool advantages. Boyd is an axe fighter. He's a fighter. He's very strong, strong oriented. He's he's kind of like a uh, a heavy damage dealer, but he's not really good at taking hits per se. He can take them, but he doesn't mitigate them per se. And then Titania. She is a paladin. She's an upgraded or promoted, uh, pre-promoted um, knight, an axe knight to be exact. And she is very strong. In fact, she's the probably the best unit, or the best Jagan unit, pre-promoted unit you get in an early Fire Emblem game in the entire series. Some would argue that Seth from Fire Emblem 8 is as good or better. I do definitely see that argument in that point, but I do like Titania more. I think she's a, a far stronger unit in the case of her own game, Join Time. And she's got really good weapon ranks, let alone the fact that she comes with the counter skill. In certain instances, causes enemy to receive half of the damage it deals to this unit. This is such a finicky ability. It's great she comes with a skill, and that it's innate, and it's hers. That's wonderful. However, I wish she had a better skill. I know why they gave her this one. It's so that she doesn't have any overpowered skill... This does not proc very often. And the only other unit in our team that has a skill is Boyd, Tempest. It doubles biorhythm effects. So biorhythm, as we discussed in last chapter, affects your hit and avoid. But by how much? It affects your hit and avoid basically depending on how high your biorhythm reach, reaches. For Boyd, it's going to affect him a plus or minus 20 hit and avoid that's pretty serious it's great when he has the plus it's not so great when he has the minus all right so let's go ahead and visit this house ah you're with the mercenaries right thank you for coming we've heard a lot about you here take this weapon we're farmers not fighters maybe you'll get some use from it a steel sword. Let's go ahead right here and trade that steel sword to Ike. He could definitely use it. And let's go ahead and attack this fighter with Boyd. What's going on out there? Is that some sort of army? Pa, a bunch of mercenaries looking for their next meal. The villagers must have hired them. Listen up, lads. Hurt them and hurt them bad. We let this bunch live and we'll have hordes of hired swords hounding us the rest of our days. 
It's those fool villagers. They think they can buy a bunch of swords and chase us away. It ain't gonna work out how they wanted. All they get for their trouble is a bunch of ruined houses. Tear them down, boys. That'll teach them. Pretty decent damage. One of the great benefits of Boyd is that he does come with a lot of HP and can take several hits. He doesn't have high defenses, so he's not really going to reduce the damage he takes by a lot, but he can take some hits. All right, let's finish you off with Ike, and we're going to use the Steel Sword. Now, thinking, or, or really, saying exactly as to why I didn't equip the Steel Sword and fight that fighter in the first attack was because of the problem with the weight system in this game. And now, this game's weight system is almost entirely pointless after you reach a certain point in the game. Right now it's pretty a pretty big deciding factor basically it's weight minus strength equals what you would reduce your speed by so for instance ike has five strength and he has seven weight on the sword so that means he's losing two points of speed so he only has six speed which because this enemy right here is wielding a weapon that reduces his speed to zero. I have well more than four speed required to double him with my iron sword. As you can see here, I'm doing seven times two. But the weight of the steel sword is 12. And because I only have five strength, that means my speed is being reduced by seven. Seven whole points. That's pretty bad. I would not double him with it. In fact, you can see, as you can see here, I would not double him. And it also, because your attack speed is lowered, your avoidance is lowered as well. So as you can see, he has more hit against me when I have the steel sword versus the iron sword. But heavier weapons that are stronger, like for instance the steel weapons, are really good weapons to use to finish off enemies when you don't necessarily want to enemy phase tank with something that's going to weigh you down. So let's go ahead and finish off this bandit here with the steel sword. That way I won't suffer another counter. You see, because had I used the iron sword there, I would have dealt, dealt seven damage and then he would have had the opportunity to hit me. So it's just kind of like a strategical nod to keep away from taking more damage than you probably should. All right, and we level up and get strength and resistance. I'm a big fan of resistance on Lord characters. Since those bandits took over, we can't even sleep at night. Please, help us save our village. Here, my mother left me this. I hope it serves you well. And we get a seraph robe. Seraph robes are wonderful trinkets that increase the maximum HP of the user by 7 points. Very, very good. And hopefully we hit and finish off this bandit. And we did. Wasn't much of a chance of missing there, 82 hit, but uh, still could have happened. My work here is done. This house is totaled. Time to move on to bigger things. Now, I smash me some merc mercenaries.
and Titania doing what Titania does. One rounding enemies. Now, we're about to see exactly why mounted units are so great in this game. After you attack or do just about any action with a mounted unit, you will, in fact, get the chance to move back or move away with the rest of your movement that you did not use up. It is phenomenal, and it's probably the most powerful it's ever been in this game of the series and in, well, in the Tellius games in general. Kanto is strong. Um, I would say that the only time Kanto was stronger is in the Jug Draw games, so the Tellius games really, but they really do come close, and it's great. It's a hidden skill. As you can see, it's not a soldier or citizen skill. It really should be soldier, though. I really would like it if if they had done that, you know, made it so that it was an actual known skill in the game. But whatever. It doesn't really matter whether it's known or written in, in the characters, models, or whatever. It is, in fact, an awesome and amazing skill. Having nothing but mounted units is a fairly powerful way to play through these games though I will not be doing that myself. And as we can see here, we have a Paladin Band. This is one of those bands that I was talking about that can help you um, micromanage your stat gains with your characters. I do not intend on keeping or using these. In fact, they are a great way to make some pretty fine gold in the early game chapters. And it's one of the other reasons why I play fixed mode, is that you can sell all the bands you get to get... A bunch of gold. Alright, let's finish off this bandit here with Boyd. And we'll finish off this one here with Ike. And we have to use the steel sword. Let's hope we hit. And we do. Fantastic. And we will gladly finish off Zawana. You looking for something, fool? You looking for a fight? <laughs> you came to the right place. I'll give you a tussle. Ugh, I, I'm meant for better than this. I don't want to die here. And Zawana is gone. And my favorite song in this whole game comes up. Victory is near. I love this theme. Um... Ah, oh, that's just the chapter. We're, we're finished with all the enemies, and it's quite fantastic. Now, some people would probably berate the fact that I used Titan Titan Titania, Titania to defeat two enemies in this chapter, including the boss. Well, for sake of quicker gameplay, I do use pre-promotes, and I don't mind. I really don't. I'm going to be using her for the rest of the run. It's not a problem. Uh, that's just that's just the way I look at it. Uh, some people think it's EXP stealing. I look at it as more of using a tool that you have, a unit that you have, in order to speed up the process or expedite things in your gameplay. So, you know, that's about it there. All right, let's go ahead and seize this tile. That's the end of it, Ike. Are you all right? Yeah, I'll be fine. You know, you surprised me. To think that you've come so far. Look at my father, though. I've still got such a long way to go. There's nothing you can do about that, after all. Commander Grail is... Huh? What about my father? Oh, nothing. Nothing? Now I'm really curious. Don't worry. You'll learn all about it someday. Hey, Ike. 
That wasn't bad for your first battle. Not as flashy as my first, though. Yeah, you were a real standout. I'll never forget the sight of you so keyed up you broke your own axe. Oscar, dang it. You didn't have to bring that up. Anyway, Ike, congrats on finishing your first mission. Welcome to the group. Everyone's alright? Then let's get going. I'm sure Mist has a nice hot meal waiting for us. And we get 200 bonus EXP for clear. Awesome. I personally really love the bonus EXP display. You do not get that option on your first playthrough. You do have to play through it once, which is one of the reasons why I made sure I was well and prepared for this uh, playthrough and played the game and beat it beforehand so that I would have those kinds of options as well. Well, that's The Battle Begins, Chapter 1. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.